Hi guys, I'm the end, spoken label, back in the house on a Sunday morning, and I'm knackered today. Didn't have a good night last night, but it always perks me up when I catch up with a writer. That's been with us before, about two years ago or so now. And it was great when this young lady with us today got in touch fairly recently, mentioning she's got a second collection out. So we've got the fantastic Kate Wilson with us today. Now, I'm not going to go into what changes Kate's gone through her life at the moment, because she's moved again since the last time I spoke with Julia. So, Kate, obviously, first of all, then, give us a little bit of the background about yourself, and then, obviously, tell people where you were and where you are now, and we'll start from there. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, so I started writing when I was quite young. Um, I did a bit of creative writing when I was doing my undergraduate degree at University in Exeter, um, then had a bit of a break for a while <laughs> until probably 2019, where I ended up sort of drafting a lot of the poems that would be in my first um, collection, One Night in January, and that came out at the beginning of 2021. Um, and at the time I was living in London, and I have just moved up to York, um, literally just over a week ago. <laughs> wow. And where I am now, yeah. <laughs> Really, I'm going to have to ask you before we start talking about your collection as well. Um, what made you want to move to York then? Because I love York, it's a great city. We were up there, as I told you off camera before, we were over there recently as well, so it's a great place. Yeah, so me and my boyfriend went and visited um, at the beginning of last year. And mm. I think because we've been sort of long distance for a while, he's been in Edinburgh and I've been in London, we were kind of just thinking, you know, what, what are we going to do next? And I think Edinburgh just felt that little bit further away from family that who are in England so we kind of really liked York when we visited and he was the one who first said oh we could live somewhere like this like it's commutable to London so I could keep my job um and so yeah we visited a few more times and that's how I've ended up here brilliant I think it's a great place to get inspired as a writer as well because it's, so, it's such a green city as well and it's got it's can be busy if you go to the centre but it's definitely got that sort of calmness on it as well and uh, what i know about your writing as well it also because the historical aspect of it it'll give you plenty of chance to sit down and write all these grisly stories about york and all the seedy <laughs> underbelly in it so <laughs> but anyway listen i was talking on that later on now we're here today to primarily talk about your new collection as well which is it's a brilliant chapbook as well the impossibility of love now i have to ask you first of all then where did the title come from for the impossibility of love? So I think it was, well, it came out of one of the poems. So um, a poem called oh, She, I think. Um, but I think I kind of felt it worked well for the collection as a title because the whole thing is about Vincent van Gogh and his paintings. And I think there's this kind of feeling that, you know, he had this very tragic life where, he maybe didn't get to experience things um, as much as, say, I did, just because of how everything ended for him. And there was a kind of intensity to that experience that I kind of wanted to capture. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, sometimes you just like, oh, that sounds like a good title as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it flows, it flows really well with it, definitely. And it gives it that sort of, you could argue, like a painting approach from the title, but also a modern-day feel as well. And... There's a lot I could ask you about this collection, so it's, but if people read your first collection, certainly, which I think, again, is a great collection. It's That was where I told you this stuff to a camera before. Obviously, with that being called One Night in January, that's got a very, very sort of winterish feel to it. If people read this collection, obviously, apart from nearly all the pieces I've had, I think they all, think they all do, actually, I've got homages or some kind of talk about Van Gogh's paintings. It is very springish sort of collection as well because the tone of it is very different. Did you find that, obviously, now you've finished a collection, looking back at it, thinking it's quite a different collection to your first collection? Yeah, and I think that's probably a lot because of the time in my life that I was writing it. So the previous collection was obviously, you know, very personal, directly about a kind of what-if love story. And, yeah, that was kind of written at a time after I'd come out of a long term relationship and my life was kind of changing quite a bit and this one I don't know maybe I was writing a lot of it when I was like falling in love with my boyfriend I guess Aww. and maybe that's Oh well <laughs> I, I if, if he listens to us I hope he realizes the good influences had on you then definitely 
<laughs> no, it's, it's a it really is a gorgeous collection, and I find it interesting. You just tell me off mic before, like uh, you actually had a lot of outtakes in this collection, didn't you? Well, originally it was going to be like a full length collection, wasn't it? So, what made you then want to strip it down? Because it, it is quite a slender little chapbook, but it's it's slender in content, but I think heavy in beauty. That's a good way of putting it, isn't it? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess at first this came out of a workshop I was doing at the poetry school where we had to do an exercise which was writing inspired by mm. painting. That's actually the first um, poem that's in the collection. It was it was a free writing exercise. Um, it's called The Last Act of Love. I, I think I'll probably read that one. Mm. Um, get to the reading part of it. Um, so I did that and then I was like, oh, yeah, no, I really liked doing this I really like sort of sort of engaging mm. with painting and using that as an inspiration for my work um so I thought great okay I've just done a pamphlet I'm going to try and do a collection now so I'm going to get going on writing loads of material over probably a year to probably about a year then I decided that I would probably benefit from having some like help some editorial help so mm. I worked with um a poet called Katrina Naomi she did a manuscript read for me and a lot of her feedback was really, really useful. But I think what it showed me was that some of the poems I'd written were, were a bit too similar in theme and maybe weren't working hard enough. So when I kind of reflected on that a bit more, I thought, well, maybe if I just make this a pamphlet and then I can kind of, you know, have more poems which say something a bit different rather than too many that are saying something that's too similar, I guess. So that's yeah. kind of what then it started to make sense that it would work well as a pamphlet. So, yeah, that's how it kind of got chopped down. <laughs> yeah, I think it kind of makes sense what you said there. It's obviously, I've not seen the outtakes, but I think sometimes they say, don't you, less is more when you're a poet sometimes. And I think doing what you've done with this collection, it works really, really well. Because like it, because you've cut it right back down to quite a slender thing. What I was interested in learning of it was, was it a conscious decision to start the collection off with the last act of love? And finish a collection off with the last landscape because both men's going about lasts. Um, so not really. Um, <laughs> initially, I had two other framing poems for the beginning and the end, which were more prose poems, mm. and we kind of made the collection a bit more sort of literally about the writer kind of going into an, a gallery and sort of looking through these paintings. Um. And in the end, I just decided against that. And so <laughs> these two poems, the beginning and end one, just ended up both having last in the title. And I was like, yeah, that kind of worked. There's a symmetry to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it does. It does work really well. And I like and nearly all of the pieces where there's actually in, in italics beneath it, which is like the reference to the painting or talking directly about him. I think my favourite piece in the collection was the one that didn't have it, actually. Whereas where you went on to, oh no, there's a couple actually. One about 36, I'm trying to find it now, 36 yeah. portraits. So tell us about that one then, because I really, this was really interesting, this where it felt like you were talking about 36 paintings in one poem. Was that yeah. a really tricky poem to write, that one, was it? Um, So it was a lot longer to start with. You ah. might not I was wondering about that because I was thinking, I thought to get 36 portraits in one poem, and it's not a 36 page poem, I was wondering. It's quite a slight, it's about two couple of pages. So, yeah, so go on. Yeah, so um, Van Gogh painted 36 self portraits. Um, and I, again, sort of going off some of the work that I'd done in this workshop course, I decided to do some free writing around this. So I was just literally looking at all of his um, self portraits just online and kind of going with the flow really it was actually one of the most enjoyable poems to write because it was kind of I wasn't thinking too much about it at the time obviously it's been refined a lot since yeah um but it was just interesting to look at those portraits and get a sense of kind of the different phases he was in in his life as well and kind of how later on you know maybe when he was struggling more with his mental health he was kind of his painting was coming more vibrant the colors were coming out more and it was kind of yeah, just mm. interesting to see the evolution of his style. And I kind of just wanted to write this poem that kind of captured that. Um, but it's quite abstract, that one. I'm glad you like it, though. 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of abstract. As my problem, I always a firm believer. Don't go for the obvious. <laughs> I'm never really good at that. So, yeah, yeah, definitely with it now. Obviously, um, where did your interest in Van Gogh come from originally? Um, so when I was really, really small, <laughs> like play group or something, we mm. did. We all had to paint our own version of the sunflowers. So I kind of have really fond memories of that painting just from a very young age and then my my grandma had got me like a print of the sunflowers that's referenced in this poetry oh, collection as well. right yeah yeah no and so yeah. I've, always, I've always just I mean I know it's not unusual Van Gogh's very popular but I've always loved his paintings and this was great to write because it kind of led me to discover some paintings of his that I didn't know before because I was quite open-minded about oh, yeah bring his works and seeing what took my fancy in terms of sort of helping me to to write some write something on them so yeah what's tell us obviously then out of something you want to know then was there any like that you've because you've just researched and found out now become favorites of yours as well then was it yeah so i think there's a wintry one um sorry forgive me because i can't remember the name of it because right. right. that one yeah, so landscape with snow. I didn't know that because obviously most people are probably more familiar with a lot of the warm, sunny, green landscapes of Van Gogh. So that was one I really liked. Um, I mean, that there's obviously a lot of famous ones in here as well. But yes, I think most of the others are probably quite well known. Yeah, yeah I've, been to, I've been to a few exhibitions of this before now. And I'll be honest, I'm definitely that side of things where I like more his sort of work rather than some of the experimental paintings you get, which is quite funny because I do like more experimental writings. But yeah, it's it's just typical sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the interesting one. That one, centre and colour, because people are curious in the piece and that. Because that one I felt could have actually gone in your first collections. I thought it was like a bridge between the first and the second collection. What do you think? Do you think it could it? It fits in both that one. I think. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely obviously more wintry, isn't it? And I guess yeah. maybe, maybe what appealed to me a bit about that was that it was a bit different to some of the other paintings that I was writing on um, and the imagery was different. So it wasn't like the sunflowers and the wheat fields. It was it was a snowy landscape, which was just a bit unfamiliar. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. You know, thematically, it would probably fit quite nicely in there. Yeah, but it's that sometimes it's good when you're doing collections anyway. If you can get like a piece that fits in, previous book you can show like is a bridge going from one to the other anyway straight away with it so i'm not going to ask you obviously what piece you think could lead into the third collection but we'll come on to that another day right <laughs> definitely with that so but yeah it's it's an excellent collection so have you managed to do many readings in support of this yet i actually haven't because partly because i've been moving house like a lot sooner than mm. i was hoping to actually so um we kind of decided we would try and move in the summer but I thought it would be later in the summer so I was planning on doing some open mic readings in London before I moved but I just haven't had time so that's like next on my list is to try and find some good place to do readings up here in York. Yeah no definitely on the bucket list I'll I've got a good zoom one I'll recommend you to as well but we'll, we'll talk off mic and that one a bit anyway so brilliant so now I always like asking writers to wrap up the chat bit first of all so I want to give you plenty of time today to let people experience these pieces what plans do they have next? But I know it's a bit up in the air at the moment for you, isn't it? So you're not 100% sure where you're going next, are you, with your creativity? Yeah, no, and it's a bit. it's been a bit strange even having this book published, actually, because I finished it quite a while ago, and it's been out. I've been submitting it for quite some time, and it's not mm. been, I've been successful until, obviously, Bosporus Press picked it up, which is fantastic, and I was really excited about that. But um, as a consequence, I feel a bit removed from the poems because I haven't been like, it's not like I've just finished writing them and now they're out in the world. I finished writing them quite a while ago. Um, and I mean, I've been doing a sort of online writers group with the literary consultancy this year that I decided I would do because they had some really good workshops as part of the programme and it's got like mm. a writing group. But I've been looking at potentially... I'm working on a very old draft of a novel that I did quite a few years ago now. Um, so I've just been, yeah, trying to do a bit of that. Obviously, nothing's happened in the last month or so because it's all been moving house. But 
Hopefully yeah. I'll get in the zone. I haven't read any poetry for a really long time. My head's just in the right space at the moment. I think, yeah, I'm in the same boat as you at the moment. We talk about this off mic. I think it's perhaps worth mentioning to people. Like I said, it's, I've just about wrapped up my last my last poetry collections. I'm not doing any more myself, to be honest. I'll still write it occasionally. But you do, but it's like, you find, don't you, like when you're moving from one creative medium to another, sometimes it's difficult to move backwards, isn't it? So, like I said, for your novel thing, which I'm, I don't want to go on a lot to in case it doesn't happen, but the premise you told me before does sound really interesting. We'll leave it at that, but yeah. Have you found then when you're trying to do this novel, like then trying to flick onto back to poetry, is it's difficult, isn't it? And it's trying to train your brain. Yeah, my brain doesn't work like that at all. I can't. I have to do one or the other because I think the challenge is obviously you're trying to balance and find time for writing in your everyday life with your day job and everything. I can't possibly find time to do poetry and a novel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Amanda, obviously people know Amanda's wife, she's the same boat because she's a freelance copywriter by day trade. And I know she's told me since she's started doing that the other year, it's kind of knocked back her creativity. Creativity is you're trying to, aren't you trying to switch, flick switches and you can only do it so often, I find. Yeah, it's hard, definitely. No, definitely that. So, listen, good luck with the collection. So when the novel's out, let us know. <laughs> what we'll do, everybody, we'll take a quick break here because I want to give Kate plenty of time to read us some pieces in this collection and we'll go talk about it as we go along. So, see you all in two shakes of the dice. <laughs> 